To understand the two-slit experiment, we are going to need a new quantum theory on light and time. In this diagram, light will expand in all possible directions as a wave particle function of quantized wave fronts. When the wave function reaches the screen with the two slits, the photons will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and also new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits as two light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating new moments in time and new quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern will collapse. This is because to observe the photon we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wavefront into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. When we turn the detector off, we re remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. Understanding time is the key to understanding the two-slit experiment. In this theory, the wave-particle duality of light combined with photon-electron couplings, creates a time continuum. Light will expand out from its centre in all directions as a, way, as a light sphere. Only when a wave front comes in contact with an electron on the surface of another atom does it collapse into a new quantum particle. This quantum particle will take the form of a photon and will have a position in space and time that the wave function never had before it collapsed. Therefore we have a new moment in time that is part of the time continuum at the most fundamental, le fundamental level, represented by the quantum wave particle function. Time only moves forward because the probability of the wave function only works one way. We always know the position or momentum of a quantum particle in the past. The uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics is the same uncertainty that the observer will have with any future event. The quantum particle will only have a position in space and time if the observer collapses the wave function into a new moment in time. It is because the observer can choose when and where to collapse the wave function that we have free will create our own future. If the observer does not collapse the wave function, the quantum particle will only have the momentum of its own wave particle function. The wave particle duality of light, or electromagnetic radiation, is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. The individual observer is the only true reference frame because they are creating their own time and space relative to their position and momentum. Therefore, the more accurately we know the position of a quantum particle, the less certain we are of its momentum. And if we know its momentum very accurately, then we can't be quite sure where it is. This is because to observe the quantum particle, we create a photon-electron coupling collapsing the wave particle function into a moment of time and space that is part of the observer's own created space-time. At a fundamental quantum level, the observer is the observed within his or her own created space-time. This is very difficult to visualize, but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the wave particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light she will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time. We therefore live in a universe of multiple space-times, 
and each space-time is governed by the Lorentz contraction of time. Because this is a continuous process at the same speed that light moves, the expanding wave function of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. This theory is very simple, but I think it is also very beautiful. It can explain all of the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. It also explains why light is a universal constant and why we have the forward momentum of time. But above all this, we have the free will for the creative evolution of our own reality within the dynamically evolving universe of Einstein and quantum mechanics and classical mechanics of Newton are united 